That's why in some cases, escalating the dose bring more side effects than benefits, even with a strong triple agonist like ranitrutide. Even in studies, at some point, going higher in dose returns absolutely nothing. Most people don't stop GLP-1s because they stop working. They stop using them because they stop being as aggressive as they were when they first started. The scale slows, the hunger creeps back, the flat loss plateaus, and this happens with all GLP-1s, including the triple agonist Renatrutide. This video isn't a beginner's video. It isn't a video explaining GLP-1s. It's more so a video for individuals who have experience with GLP-1s and they wonder why the progress that they had when they first started using the GLP-1 isn't the same as the progress they currently have and what they can do to mitigate the slowdown in weight loss or moving the scale. Plateaus will eventually happen with all GLP-1s, including retrotide. And in this video, I am gonna explain exactly what you can do in order to slow down the plateau and also improve the runway when it comes to extending how effective these GLP-1 research compounds are. GLP-1 research compounds are elite at what they do. There, there's no other compounds on the market like a GLP-1. They will help you eat less. They will increase satiety, slow uh, gastric emptying. And I think the most important mechanism that they do is reduce food noise. The noise that's telling you that your body needs food. So GLP-1s, they do the job. Early on, especially with research compounds like Relicrutide, this big calorie deficit that GLP-1s create is going to move the scale. Hunger pretty much disappears. Weight comes off quickly for most. That's why the first phase feels automatic. But appetite suppression is a input side solution. It controls calories in, but it doesn't do, it doesn't permanently control how much energy your body burns. And the difference between these two matters. Retrotide, unlike other GLP-1s, is a triple agonist. It targets three receptors, the GLP-1, the GIP, and the glucagon. The glucagon signaling adds some energy expenditure. Targeting the glucagon receptor makes retrotide feel a much stronger than the older GLP-1 research compounds. But here's the key point that most people miss when it comes to retrotide. It doesn't, it, it, it extends the, the runway when it comes to plateauing to GLP-1 research compounds, but it doesn't eliminate the runway. It just gives you more leeway to where you are still losing weight more effectively, but that runway will come to an end. The extent of energy expenditure that retrotide does offer from targeting the glucagon receptor is real, it's modest, and it's regulated. So here's what happens when you plateau on a GLP-1 research compound. As the body weight drops, the energy requirements drop as well. Even with perfect compliances, your calorie deficit shrinks. The body has absolutely no choice but to adapt. That adaptation includes lower vessel metabolic rate, less spontaneous movement, more conservation signaling. This doesn't mean that the GLP-1 fail, it's just basic biology. You lost a lot of weight, therefore you are burning a whole lot less calories and the scale isn't moving as fast as it was moving when you first started that GLP-1 research compound. When people say that it stopped working, more than likely the mechanism itself lost leverage. It's still working, it's still 
helping you maintain the weight that you lost, but it's not doing it to the extent where it's noticeable as it was noticeable when you first started the GLP-1 research compound. You're smaller, you're burning fewer calories, and appetite suppression can only go so far. That's why in some cases, escalating the dose bring more side effects than benefits, even with a strong triple agonist like retrotide. Even in studies, at some point, going higher in dose returns absolutely nothing because you are already at the point to where you're small enough and increasing the dose isn't gonna help you lose any more weight than you've already lost. It may maintain the weight that you have lost, but the scale may just not move. Appetite control works best early on, but once your appetite is controlled, fat loss depends mostly on energy expenditure and signaling efficiencies. At this point, appetite is no longer the bottleneck. Output and signaling are. When fat loss slows, the very wrong question to ask is what suppresses the appetite more? The right question is what signal am I missing? This is where congrelantide comes in. Congrelantide is a amylin analog it's a hormone that works alongside GLP-1 research compounds. It targets an uh, entirely different pathway, but it works great when stacked with GLP-1 research compounds. The amylin analog acts more centrally. It reinforces meal termination, and it improves satiety durability over time. Plateaus aren't always hunger coming back, they're often satiety signaling losing consistency. That's what the amylin analog helps reinforce. Renatrutide handles appetite, nutrient handling, and some output. What it doesn't fully solve is long-term satiety reinforcement. Cogrillantide supports this through an entirely different parallel system. And this is important to remember. Congrelantide isn't stacked with retrotide because retrotide failed. It's stacked because appetite control is strongest when multiple biological signals agree. This stack doesn't override metabolic adaptation, which I mentioned earlier. You still will eventually plateau. It effectively delays it by improving signaling efficiency and adherence. That honestly matters. In no way am I saying that you shouldn't increase the dose of any of these GLP-1 research compounds. I'm not saying that. I'm simply saying if you want to extend the runway of a GLP-1, the most effective thing that you can do is stack it with congrelantide and run it alongside that to extend the runway even further before resulting to increasing the dose of your GLP-1 research compounds. If your goal is to maximize weight loss for as long as you can, the best method to go about it is stacking GL a GLP-1 with a research compound like congrelantide that targets uh, different uh, mechanisms in a parallel pathway in order to get the results that you need. GLP-1s don't stop working. They just stop being enough on their own for you to move the scale even more or even at the same pace that it was moving when you first started it. Once you get a pretty good understanding of the mechanisms, not only that uh, GLP-1 use, but other research compounds like congrelantide, you won't panic when you do plateau, you'll make adjustments intelligently so you can extend your runway when it comes to fat loss if fat loss is still your goal. So if this video helped you in any way, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll check you guys later. Thanks.